<clears throat> Hello, this is Mad Cat. I know I haven't really done a new video in a while. I actually uploaded like all my videos um, all in one day that I had shot like last week, but I haven't done any new ones today. So I'm going to be doing two uh, videos, one for each channel, but it's going to be talking about kind of the same thing. Uh, first, I want to report that I'm officially off my crutches. I know one of the last videos I just uploaded, I said that <clears throat> I was trying to get off my crutches, but I was still technically on them. But now I've officially given up my crutches. I actually gave them to another person who uses crutches because his was like being worn at the nub. So, And then I told the reverend there, who's kind of in charge of everything, who initially moved me down. I told him I no longer need the crutches so he can move me back up. Um, so it's 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 a relief to be moved back up. I mean, being downstairs came with some uh, fringe benefits. Like, you know, I get to use a shower by myself. Now I have to use a shower with like 12 other dudes naked. That doesn't really bother me to be in a shower because, you know, I've been in the military before and I've been to like <clears throat> BDSM parties where there's a lot of naked people, especially in the swimming pool. So I'm not bothered by nudity. I just don't want anyone else to think that I'm suddenly gay because like I'm relaxed in that situation. But other than that, <laughs> um, the other thing is like, I don't have to put my bag up in the cage. I can keep it with me. So I could bust out my laptop anytime I wanted. I can't do that anymore. I have to put it in the cage every night. Uh, just to go upstairs But I'm glad to be away first off the place that they moved me to because when I first came to the shelter there were people in the uh, section that my uh, Friend say hi Felipe What up y'all? He can't listen to simple instructions. I tell him to say hi. He says what up y'all? <laughs> what up y'all is my way of saying hi <laughs> And then when somebody says hello, I'd be like fuck off <laughs> But um, the area he stays in, which is, you know, where we met, basically, because we sleep next to each other. And separate beds. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, that area has some rude motherfuckers, because it was like, there's, <clears throat> well, the snoring doesn't bother me, but it does get to him. And I can understand it. I mean, he took a video of the person basically gagging on their own tongue. But there's another, there, there's a couple of guys who actually like to play music as loud as possible. We're talking like gospel music here. So it's like, it's not, it's bad enough we have to be in a Christian mission. Now we have to hear about Christ when I'm trying to sleep. <clears throat> but the new area that put me in now is actually pretty quiet. Um, a lot of people just kind of keep to themselves. Um, I can still hear the music from his section. But it's very muted, given the distance and the number of walls in the way. And I actually slept, slept pretty well. Um, I didn't really get a full night's rest, but certainly more sleep than I've gotten um, than any other day that I've been there. But another reason that I really wanted to move up is that, you know, being down in the bottom floor with... Um, all of the other disabled people, those are some greedy motherfuckers. I'm, I, I'm shitting you not. It's like, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm not an ableist. I mean, I'm far from an ableist. I have my own issues. I'm still limping right now. But, you know, I at least took responsibility for my injury and that the moment that I could walk without the crutches, I told the reverend, hey, put someone in my place. Put someone who actually needs it. But those motherfuckers, they are such, so fucking greedy. It pisses me off. Like, we get cots, basically. We get cots and two mattresses to sleep on. Well, the cots are not that great. They keep um, <clears throat> kind of slumping in the middle. So they put uh, crates underneath. Now, ever since we've been getting crates, we always got two crates per bed. Um... And then there was one crate that was actually like, the, the all the crates are like a regular square size, but there was one crate that's a rectangle size. And one person makes sure every day they get it. 
okay, fine, whatever. But then one guy, and I won't say who these people are or give any physical descriptions because, well, I'm just polite like that. But he decides that he wants to grab three cartons, or crates rather, or three milk crates, instead of two. <clears throat> which left me with just one. And I said to him, you realize that by grabbing three, you're leaving me with one. And he was like, what are you trying to say? You need two to, in order to sleep? He just started yelling at me. <clears throat> like somehow I offended him for calling him out for being a greedy motherfucker. You know, if he had like apologized, like, oh, sorry, dude, I didn't realize that there weren't any more crates left. Or he's like, well, do you mind if I have three because I have really difficult sleeping? <clears throat> or, you know, but he just started yelling at me that, you know, somehow I'm in the wrong for letting him know that he should think about other people, people other than himself. You know, he didn't even, when he was looking at the crates, because they put all the crates out. And he's sitting, he looks at the crates like, he didn't think, huh, well, if I take this, then that means someone else only gets one. Or maybe I should go ask and make sure someone's okay that I do this. He saw it as, oh, I can have another crate and be even more comfortable. His comfort is far more important than anyone else. And that's the kind of mentality these individuals have, that they themselves are above everyone else. And then he's like, well, if you need a crate, you can go back to the room and get one. Well, there are no other ones. Yes, there are. And I'm like, no, there isn't. I checked. He's like, oh, well, you could go to the lunchroom or hell, I'll go out into the alleyway and get you a crate. He'll do anything so long as he doesn't have to give up the crate he already has. You know, he's like, oh, sorry, dude. Here, you can have the crate back. Because, you know, I need comfort, you know. But I just let it go because he was just so dead set on having it. And to even suggest that, you know, he you know, be fair. I mean, it's a minor issue, but it's like there's a larger issue at hand here. I mean, you know, I made myself comfortable with one crate. It wasn't great, but <clears throat> but there was another guy because every night we get the lights turned off at nine. Well, one guy, he gets so pissed off that when he's ready to sleep, everyone else should be ready to sleep. And so he just gets so pissed off by 8.30. He's like, damn, man, when are the lights going off? 9 o'clock. They go off 9 o'clock every day. So one time at like 8.45, I think I said 9. Yeah, 8.45, he um, decides to turn off the lights early. I don't really give a shit. I can see fairly well even without the lights on. Well, then one of the workers who works there is trying to put a bed together. Uh, for another a new person that we got in there and he tells me go turn on the lights so I turn on the lights well this individual decides to get up in my face it's like why the fuck did you do that I mean he starts swearing at me why the fuck did you do that I'm like I was told to it's like you don't work here you don't get to decide anything at all I'm like, I'm sorry, I was told to go turn it on. And he's like, e, no, you don't need to do anything at all. I'm going to turn it back off. Uh, you, you, can, you just need to mind your own fucking business. And it's like, my Lord. So what? You're inconvenienced for like five minutes while another person gets their bed made. And he decides to turn off the lights and then he's swearing under his breath. And he finally says, I'm going to choke you in your sleep. And... You know, one of the key rules uh, being at that place is you're not allowed to threaten another person. And so I'm like, what did you say? And he screamed it out loud. I'm going to fucking choke you in your sleep. There's not one other person that was down there. And there were like five other guys down there who heard him say anything like that. There was even one, the one worker that was making the bed was right there when he said it. And I asked him later, did you hear what he said to me? And he's like, no. Now, I could go report him. But the thing of it is, is it wasn't really a serious threat. I knew that he was just speaking out of his ass. I didn't like it, though. And he, but I was also afraid because kind of the culture that we live in today, because he's an older black man 
who's on crutches or actually uses a cane. I don't even know why he's actually down there, but you know, I had just kind of have this feeling that, you know, if I go and report him, they'll take pity on him and it's like, oh, it's not a big deal. We'll talk to him and we'll, we'll see if we can improve the situation. And then of course nothing happens and then he knows that I'd ratted him out. You know, and I don't need that kind of thing, you know. Um, but Felipe, he's telling me that, you know, I'm being like, I, I, I'm looking for the racist issue in all of this, that, you know, I'm too concerned about that and that I should just be really standing up for myself. And I try to let him know, you know, I'm white. You know, if I go up against a black man, they can always play the race card. And this particular individual, the guy who was helping build the bed, he has to set up our beds every night. And he actually went up to him because he's also white. He's like, damn, you're a racist, dude. And he's like, why am I racist? And he's like, because you set up the white people's folks bed first before you set up mine. Well, he decides to sleep in the far back corner. And the people who sleep near the front are white. He does it in order. That doesn't make him racist. That makes him efficient. all of this broke out, he, you know, all side can claim racism, but given the left and right now, he hits me, he, he tried to hit me because I'm white, or he tried to hit me because I'm black. Either way, it's no longer considered a racial thing, now it's the left and right, so maybe before that happened, maybe they still gave a shit whether or not we spoke shit about blacks or some shit, is how they see it, but you know what, blacks could have got away with that racism shit before this, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I still... Because there's a lot of white hate that gets thrown my way. Yeah, I know, but that's just fucked up. But they're trying, I, I feel like everyone's using our current situation in the country to better justify the means. Well, I mean, we definitely have people in Philadelphia you now that have been no, protesting right. statues. Fucking statues. I don't know what's going on with the rest of the United States. I know there was some issue in uh, Charlotte's, Char Charlotte or Charlottesville? Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. <clears throat> but, I mean, around here, it's like every few days, there's a protest around one of these statues. And these are wonderful built statues. Yeah. And, you know, it's like they're like, oh, it represents racism and it's holding the black man down. And, you know, it's funny listening to some of the uh, black individuals in the shelter, because not all of them hate me, but they're like, damn, this is some fucked up shit we're in. It's a fucking statue, man. You know, you want some actual racism, you can find it, you know. Stop looking for it. Stop looking for new sources of it. Um, and there's actually some black people here who actually support Trump. You know, the people that tend to not support Trump are the people that actually work there, the chaplains and the helpers. You know, they all hate Trump and they all think that he's the Antichrist. And that we're in end times, you know, it's I like, you know, <laughs> yeah, he, Felipe uh, actually used the, the original language of the, uh, <laughs> the Bible to prove that Barack Obama was the Antichrist. And it was actually rather ingenious. But, um, you know, it's just, well, that, that was the other incident that happened uh, recently. I was at a shelter going for uh, some breakfast and uh, me and Felipe were together and it, it's a very, very nice place. I love this place, but it's like every time I come there, I see a sign like now playing white devil. And I'm, can you please stop that? <laughs> the bird. Well then throw up pieces of the apple. Stop spitting out the apple. They can't chew up this apple. It is a Anyways, um, like every time I come here, I see a sign for now playing White Devil. I'm like, wow, I feel welcomed. But other than that, they're pretty nice. But anyways, we're waiting outside for breakfast to open up. And um, yeah, we were kind of, I thought we were there for breakfast. But anyways, um, we we're, were chatting to this uh, woman. We're talking to this woman, and um, she mentioned that she was in the Air Force, and I mentioned I was in the Air Force. And some gentleman came up to us, and he's like, 
who was in the Air Force? And I'm like, we both were. And he's like, anyone who's in the Air Force shouldn't be here right now. And I'm like, okay. And then he turns to her and is like, oh, no, ma'am, you're pretty cool. I understand why you're here. And then looks back at me and is like, but, yeah, if you were in the Air Force, you shouldn't be here right now. And I'm like, and I, I, Felipe actually kind of uh, actually agrees with me on this, that I think what he was actually saying is because I was white, not because I was in the Air Force. He was just using the Air Force as an excuse. Because he was black himself, the woman was black, and, well, Felipe... He's in the middle. He's in the middle. So, and I'm like telling him, like, look, you know, I got out of the military in 2000. 17 years, I've lived 17 years of life. Other shit has happened to me that allows me, that has caused me to be here. And he's like, oh, what happened to you? And I'm like, I'm not comfortable talking about it. Now, that was a lie. I'm very comfortable talking about my situation, but I'm not going to talk about my situation to him. Because he's already made a judgment on me. He's made a judgment that because I was in the Air Force, that somehow I'm above being at a shelter. Or that in the actual reason, because I'm white, I'm not allowed to be poor. Why do I want to tell him anything at all? He's already judged me, so if I tell him what my actual reason is, he's just going to find some way to dissect it and prove that I don't need to be there. And that is something that I encounter. Now, one, some people might say, well, now you know how black people feel every day. You know, but I don't think that's a good enough justification, in all honesty. I mean, people want equality around here, but their idea of equality is to punish people that have never really done anything bad. I mean, I've never been racist in my life or seriously racist. I mean, you have, you know, I have a moment when you're younger, but you grow up and you... You know, but, you know, <clears throat> like because some people in history have been slaves, that means all white people need to suffer. That because um, black people are discriminated against, I need to be discriminated against. How is that equality? That's not moving the things forward. That's just shifting the balance of power. And that's all it is, is that, you know, People want to just be superior than other people. That's it. It's not about true equality. And so that's why I kind of find bullshit of, well, now you know what it's like. And it's like, I already knew what it was like. I've been judged all my life. And because I'm white, it doesn't really count. So, but yeah, I get a lot of white hate thrown my way that because I'm white, I'm somehow to blame for all of the problems in this world. And that's not really fair. I mean, I can't just look at black people and say, well, black people are the reason why everything's so wrong in this world. I'd be called racist for that. But black people can do it to me. So, I mean, that's just the sort of things I encounter. And that was definitely the things that I encountered on the first floor that somehow I wasn't allowed to have any sort of opinion. I wasn't allowed to do anything. And the moment I did, I had someone in my face threatening to kill me. So that's why I wanted off the, that floor. I am now happy where I'm at. It seems pretty, pretty peaceful. I got some decent sleep. And you know what? Within a week's time, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be in Detroit. However, I do recognize that, you know, Detroit could be a lot worse than this. But according to Felipe, um, this is kind of the middle ground as far as shelters go. So my experience in Detroit could be worse. It could actually be better. There are some really good shelters out there, like in New Hampshire. So um, I'm just trying to keep an open mind right now. But... <sighs> It's, it's just so good to be off crutches. I actually have a lot more energy now because it was like it takes a lot of energy just to use crutches. And now I'm not using crutches. I feel like I have an extra spring in my step, you know. And, you know, I got some decent sleep last night, so I'm going to be able to get um, some good work done today. But other than that, ugh, I just can't wait to leave. You know, I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad to be leaving. I've kind of gotten used to this place. And, 
you know, the one thing about Philadelphia is if you really know how things work around here, you can eat like every single day. You don't even necessarily need to be in a shelter to eat every single day. They hand out food like in several different places throughout the city. And it's like one of the best places to be homeless, although this is the only place that I've been homeless, but I'm more or less relying on Felipe's opinion of that because he's been in what, like 10 different shelters? Oh, so he's been in six shelters, so I kind of rely on his knowledge of them. But, you know, as far as Philadelphia, it just seems like... It's going to be seven because when I go to Erie to stay with my brother, I'm only going to stay there for like two weeks, and then I'm going to conserve the rest of my money and go find a shelter out there. So I'll, I'll be at a seven shelter for two weeks, and two weeks is definitely long enough to make a judgment because you don't even need that kind of time. But, you know, I also, I've kind of done a little bit of research on Detroit, and I hear good things about that. I think San Francisco is going down next with that Yoda statue. I mean, he was a rebel, right? No, it's in San Francisco. Let's find out that's where the statue is. It's a family. I bet you it's going to be in the paper. You're going to see the fucking, you're going to see the clones just running at the fucking statue with rope and duct tape. And it's just a bunch of people who read But you notice paper. that um, you never see any black armor clones. You only see white armor clones. Well, yeah, black people are too good to fucking wear armor, so they just performed magic and started using fucking crazy mind games. Who eventually probably became something. Wasn't it Samuel L. Jackson? Anyways, I need to end this video. So anyways, that's going to do it for me today. Um, be sure to check out my about section. You'll find my links for Patreon, PayPal, and my GoFundMe, still trying to raise money to help me get off the streets. Um, and while I will have somewhere to be in November, um, if I can't have a good start in my life, um, I should be able to prevent myself from ever going back on the streets. Um, so there are those options there. Go ahead and ignore my Amazon wish list that no longer applies to me. I haven't had a chance to take that off. But if you don't want to do any of those, but you still want to help me out, consider buying my book. Um, every time I get a sale on that, that puts me higher in search results. So I want to try to sell as many as I can on that. Plus, I do make money off of that. Anyways, that's going to do it for me today. This is Mad Cat signing off.